see the wind, but what you see is the effects of the wind. In the same way, what you see on the outside with your physical eyes is the effect of the spiritual world. This is how God defines you. The one who knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, he has blessed you in the heavenly places in Christ. So in Christ, you are blessed. Wow, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on the time you're watching this, my name is Ben Fetcher. This is Beholding Christ. And uh, we are excited. I am excited to have you watching this program. And uh, it's a blessing. It's a blessing, a great blessing to have you. And it's a wonderful day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. How are you? How have you been? I know you're well. And uh, I want us to get back to the scriptures. We get back to the word because the word is what defines us. We are defined by the word. We are defined by the scriptures and not just any other word, but the word himself. Because the word is not an it. The word is a he. The word that became flesh. John 1 verse 14. I start from verse 1. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word in verse 14 became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So the word is a person, and that word is Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are defined by him, and outside him, there is nothing that is, that is, that exists outside him that can ever exist. Everything that we see was created for him, by him, and through him. Praise be to God. And he is the word that defines us. Hallelujah. Where have you been drawing your definition, your identity from, my friend? If you've not been drawing your identity from the word of God, you've been drawing your identity from uh, the situations around you, the people around you, you've been drawing your identity from the circumstances. Some even have named themselves according to the sicknesses that they have. Others have named themselves according to the, the situations that is going on around their lives and uh, the conditions that are happening in their lives. But if you've not been defining and you have, been, you have not allowed the word of God to define you. This is the time, this is the hour to know how the word defines you. Because you are not what the world says. You are not what the body tells you. You are not what the, your bank account tells you. You are not what your family tells you. You are what the word says about you. Because even before you existed physically, before you began to exist physically, you existed in God's mind. And God's mind is his word. Remember what the words he told Jeremiah, that even before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Now, the one who knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, and even before you started to exist, is the one talking to you today. And he has a definition for you because he's your creator. So if you can take this moment and listen to what he talk, he's saying about you, then you'll enjoy and you'll start living like it. Jesus said, or the scripture says again in Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. People don't perish. People don't suffer because the devil is too big. People don't suffer because they have big loans. People don't suffer because they are sick or because of sickness. People suffer because they lack knowledge. It's time even you that have been suffering from a certain kind of sickness, time is now when you stop allowing that sickness to define you because it's the word of God that defines you. And Isaiah said, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. But now after the cross, the Bible says in Peter that by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. Wholeness is your portion right now. And if you'll be watching this and you're feeling sick somewhere. I speak wholeness right now. I command sickness to leave your body. I command pain to leave your body because your body is the dwelling place of God, not the dwelling place of sicknesses. Receive your healing right now. Amen. So we've been talking about our eyes being enlightened and we say that our eyes are enlightened so that we may see ourselves as God sees us. And we saw that we have been raised together with Christ far above all powers, all principalities, all the wisdom of this world, we have been raised above because we are from above. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, says that them that are of the of the earth, of the earth, the one that is of the earth, they are earthy. That is, those who draw the identity from Adam, 
they are earthy. But those who draw their identity from the heavenly one, they are heavenly. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And I want us to back up a little bit and we start from the, the, uh, the previous chapter, uh, chapter, chapter one, that is of uh, Ephesians chapter one, because we were looking at chapter two. And there is something that I mentioned in our last show. I said that the book of Ephesians is divided into three parts. The first part is our sitting position in Christ, where we have been established in our identity in Christ. The second part is our walking position, walking worthy of who we are. But that comes after knowing who we are. Then the third part is the standing position. How now we stand against the wicked, uh, the, the plans and the schemes of the enemy. Praise be to God. And this should remain in that order. Seated, we walk and we stand. It is, so, the book, the, so the book of Ephesians is a sit, walk, stand book. Seated in our position in Christ. We walk because we know our position in Christ and we stand against the enemy because we know our position in Christ. But it is unfortunate because most believers don't even know whether they are supposed to be sitting, standing or walking. Actually, many people got born again, they went to church and the church messed them up. Sorry to say, the church messed them up because immediately they got born again that day, they were taught how they were taught. Now the devil is against you. You have to fight the enemy. So they were taught how to go to warfare even before they are equipped with the weapons of warfare. And I give an example with the, the army. You know, when you want to become part of the army, there is a process. You don't just, you are not just recruited and the same day you are sent to Somalia or to Ethiopia or to Sudan. No, 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 no. It can't happen like that. But most believers got born again and they were taught, they were taught and they were, they were sent into the battlefield and they were told, now you have to fight the devil, you have to fight sickness, you have to fight the, the principalities, you have to fight even things that don't, that don't exist. Praise be to God. The army, for you to start uh, being uh, deployed into specific war, war zones or battlefields as an army, you have first to be recruited. Then after the recruitment, there is now the training and in the training, that is where we, you are taught who you have become, that you're no longer a civilian. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to the nation. You don't belong to your own mother. You belong to the nation. Praise be to God. So that is what you are taught when you get into the army. And now you are, after you have been equipped to know who you are as an army or, or as a soldier, then you are sent into the battlefield. Praise be to God. But it will be a great confusion if the government, for example, our government, the government of Kenya, recruits people for uh, to be taken as soldiers. And the, the very first day when they are recruited, they are sent to Somalia. They will die and uh, you'll, you'll not have anything to do about it. They will be killed because they are not skilled. They will be killed because they are not skilled. And that is how many believers are being taken advantage by the devil. Why? Because they have not been taught. They, have been, they, they don't have the, uh, the spiritual skills. They don't have the spiritual muscles. They have not been trained. If you take a soldier that is not trained to the battlefield, he will die. But now that is why we are here. So the book of Ephesians, before you go to standing against the schemes of the devil, before you go to understanding spiritual warfare, before you go to the, the, the weapons of warfare in chapter 6, you have to realize that the first thing that has happened is that you have an identity in Christ. You are not who you used to be. You are now, you have not been brought into a new world, the world of Christ. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And when you know that, now you'll be able to go and face the devil. Praise be to God. Because it's not like the devil is too big, but it's like people don't know. That is why they think the devil is too big. And the devil takes advantage. Actually, if there is something that the devil rejoices, is when you go to church, you pray, you clap your hands, you sing and dance, and never come to the knowledge of the truth. You are not a threat to the devil. The greatest fear and the, the, the greatest threat to the devil is a believer who is not just born again, who is not just a prayer warrior, who is not just a, 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 a spiritual warfare person, but a believer who understands his position in Christ. And that is why, uh, that is what Paul seeks to establish in all his epistles. And now we are looking at the book of Ephesians. 
uh, from chapter 1. And he says, uh, chapter 1, is, the Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are, who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. So he's not just saying, this is not just a letter to the church at Ephesus, but it is all the faithful that are in Christ Jesus. He says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. So the first thing that he teaches believers is that you have been blessed. You have been blessed. He says, who has blessed us? Something that is very key anytime you are reading the scriptures or, or anytime you are opening the word of God or opening the Bible to read, you must understand what we call the tenses. When we were in school, we were, talk about the, we were taught about the three tenses. The first one is the past tense, then we have present tense, then we have the future tense. Praise be to God. Without understanding the tenses, you read everything in the scriptures and you live a confused life. Thinking that everything applies to you or everything that is written is for the future and for the past or even for the present. But when you read the Bible, when you read the word, you must understand when it talks about the present or the future or the past tense. Now, reading verse 3 again, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, this is your father, your creator, the one who knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He is the one now defining you that have believed in him. This has only been made possible when you believe the gospel. Otherwise, if you're not in Christ, if you've not believed the Lord Jesus Christ, you've not accepted the gift of salvation, this is still not true about you. That is why uh, he says to the faithful which are in Christ, to the faithful, the faithful are those who believe in Jesus Christ. Now, this is how God defines you. This is how God sees you. So forget about how you see yourself. Forget about how people describe you. Forget about how situations, how the government describes you. Forget about how your mother and your father describe you. Forget about how your grandmother describe you or your grandfather. Forget about how your sickness has defined and described you and listen to God who knew you before you entered into your mother's womb, how he is describing you. He says he, that he has blessed you. My God, you have been blessed. You have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. The first thing that you have received is the blessing of God. Hallelujah. Everything that God has always desired to give you, everything that God has forever desired to, for you to have, he has blessed you with it. Someone will say that uh, he says every spiritual blessing. Let me tell you that the, great, the, the lesser is always included in the greater. There is a world that is greater than the physical world. And what hinders us from seeing that world is actually our physical eyes. That is what hinders us from seeing the real, uh, the real world. Leave alone even the, 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 the spiritual world. Even today, there are some things that are in this, uh, this world that we cannot see. Because we only see as far as our eyes can or as far as the light that we are receiving can enable us to see. Praise be to God. So we are limited to the, to the, the rainbow colors. That is what we see. Anything beyond, red, beyond the, rain, the, the rainbow colors, we cannot see it. We cannot define it. Praise be to God. But now uh, we are talking about the spiritual blessing. He says, Every spiritual blessing. So someone disqualifies that and says, he is talking about spiritual things, not physical things. But I was saying that the, the lesser things are included in the greater. The spiritual world is the greater one, is greater than the physical world. So the physical things are included in the spiritual world. I, I always give an example of the, the wind. If you look at the if you try to look at the wind you not see the wind but what you see is the effects of the wind in the same way what you see on the outside with your physical eyes is the effect of the spiritual world praise be to god so you are needed to have your eyes enlightened so he has said that he has blessed you 
with all spiritual blessings. Hallelujah. So every other physical blessing is included in the spiritual blessing. I want you I want us to take a small break and uh, don't change, don't go away because we'll be right back after the break. This is Beholding Christ, Ben Fetcher is my name. Hallelujah. See you after the break. We met in school actually, mm -hmm. high school. Tukimaliza shule mm -hmm. in that was 2019. Mm -hmm. That's when we made it officially. Mm -hmm. Unana, mm -hmm. ju after sa kuongea, 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 nini, nini, mm -hmm. eh. Some point, ika figa kaniambia, okay. So we've been talking for a while now, we've been friends, and mm -hmm. I would really like you to be my girlfriend. So is it a yes or no? Enyewe, mm -hmm. ninge ngodzea bado. Ata as much as ange niambia, bado, 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 I was ready to wait. Mm -hmm. Niki mwambia, it's okay, you can just think of it. Mm -hmm. Every time na mwambia ivo. Yeah. Unana, yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Ben Fetcher is my name. This is Beholding Christ. And I'm excited. Uh, we were looking at Ephesians chapter 1. We are in verse 3, which says that we have been blessed. Every believer has been blessed. You have been blessed. You are blessed. You see, this is not even arguing about curses. This is beyond arguing about curses. This is God himself telling you that he has blessed you. And listen to this word. He says, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, in Christ, in the heavenly places, in Christ. Praise be to God. So these spiritual blessings are in the heavenly places and these heavenly places are in Christ. So now, people have been asking me, where is heaven? Is it up there? Is it down there? Now, the, the heaven has been described here. The heavenly places is called, is found in Christ. So the moment you believed in Christ, you entered the heavenly places. Let me show you again. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, where we were. He says, we had read this verse. He says, uh, and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So this blessing is in the heavenly places and the heavenly places is in Christ Jesus. So every believer, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, have been have been brought, you have been brought into the place called the heavenly places because this heavenly places is in Christ. So there is no blessing outside the heavenly places. There is no blessing outside Christ. So if you are in Christ, you are blessed, man. You're not looking forward. Again, we say we must, we must be very serious when it comes to the tenses. Mm. The tense that is used here is past tense. He has blessed us. He has blessed us. So this is not something we are looking forward to. We are not looking forward to be blessed. We are not looking forward to receive blessing. You have been blessed. But sometimes what you call blessing is not really blessing. Because you, it is un, some, uh, for, for some people, it is until they see themselves driving a Prado, until you see yourself driving a Mercedes Benz, until you see yourself having your own beautiful house, you see yourself having uh, uh, the best of the best of the best jobs, the best businesses, that is when you call yourself, man, I'm blessed. But I, God is defining you differently. He says, the moment you landed into the place called Christ, he has blessed you. So when you, you get physical things like uh, cars and houses and all those physical things, they are manifestations of the blessing of God inside you. So whether you have a car, whether you have millions or thousands or hundreds, or you live in the best places in this nation or in the nation where you belong, you are driving the best things, you are living in the best houses. Whether you are in them or not, the thing is this, this is how God defines you. The one who knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, he defines you like this, that he has blessed you. He has blessed you in the heavenly places in Christ. So in Christ, you are blessed. That is why next time when we meet, I ask you, how are you? Don't tell me you're just fine. Tell me you're blessed. Amen. You are blessed because you are in Christ. Verse 4, he says, just just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Look at this. Even before the world was laid, even before the foundation of the world was laid, he chose us. He chose you. This is again a thing of the past. So God did not uh, start knowing you when you appeared in the physical world, when you got born. Some of us were born by mistake, but you are never a mistake. 
Why? Because God chose you even before the foundations of the world were laid. So before God had uh, elephants in his mind, before he had buffaloes in his mind, before he had mountains and rivers, before he had nations in his mind, he had you. Because he chose you before the foundations of the world. Before he did anything, before he laid the foundation of this world, he had you in mind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That is why uh, the writer of Matthew, he says that we are of greater importance than the birds of the air. Before God thought about those things, before God thought about having trees and having all the things that we admire in the natural world, he thought of you. you ha he had you in his mind. Praise be to God. And he chose you in him. Where? He chose you in Christ before the foundation of the world that you should be holy and without blame before him in love. Again, look at this. You have been struggling to prove to God that you are living a holy life. You have been struggling to be holy. But look at this. Holiness is not by you choosing to be holy. It is God who chose you to be holy. Ah, praise be to God. And this choosing is in Christ. So everyone that is in Christ, in Christ there is a choosing that happened before the world was framed. Everyone that will believe in Christ was predestinated to look like Christ, was predestinated to be holy, was pre predestinated to be without blame, was pre uh, predestinated to be without blame before him in love. So. This is how God sees you. He sees you in Christ as blessed. He sees you in Christ as holy and without blame. Hallelujah. Holiness is Christ in you. Holiness is you in Christ. The moment you received Christ, you received his holiness. I know you've heard many people tell you that uh, you not see God because you're not holy. You act like you are the, the worst murderer. You are the worst thief. You are, you are all that evil things that people say. And you know in yourself it's true. I'm not good. I'm a robber. I lie. I'm not a faithful man. I'm not a good person. I am a sinner. I don't deserve anything. Yes, the fact that you don't deserve is what qualifies you for God. God does not look for those people who deserve. Because if you deserve it, you don't need him. That is why Jesus said when he came here on earth, I, the, the doctor does not come to the people who are already whole. He comes to them that are sick. So if you feel like you can work your way out to become holy, if you feel like you can work your way out by your religious activities to become righteous, then you don't need Jesus. You can save yourself. But Jesus came to save and to to look, uh, to fight and save those who are lost, like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was a sinner, but now I have been made the righteousness of God. And he chose me in Christ. This means for those who are in Christ, they have already been chosen to be holy and without blame. I am unblameable. Again, Colossians 1, 21, uh, Colossians 1 verse 21. Maybe I can get there for a moment. Colossians 1. Verse 21, the Bible says, uh, let me read it for you. Colossians 1 verse 21. And you that were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled you in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy. So what, what made it possible for you to be presented before God as holy is this the death of Christ? Listen to this. He says that he has reconciled you in the body of his flesh through death. This is what the death of Christ achieved for you and I. That he, may, he has presented you before God as holy. So the coming of Jesus and the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ was not like any other story in the scriptures. Actually, it is the main story in the scriptures. That is why we behold him, because it is in him we get our identity. So because of what he did for you and I, he, has say, he says that he has presented us before God as holy. So when God is looking for holy people, you are one of them. Why? Because of what Christ did. Again, it's not because of what you do, because if Ben Fetcher or yourself, we are given a million years to 
get to the standards of God's holiness, none of us can stand. Your good works, the Bible says in Isaiah, your good works, they are like fill the rags. You cannot stand before God and tell him of how good you have been. None of us is good enough to qualify for anything from God. None of us can qualify by himself. I can't say that because I have been praying so much, because I've been fasting, because I never miss church, because I read the Bible every day, I pray every day, that is why I'm holy, that is why I'm righteous. No, 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 and no, not one. That is why he chose us in Christ. The moment you believed in Christ, it was counted for you as holy. Colossians 1.21, verse 22, holy and unblameable. You are blameless. I know the world and everyone around you can blame you for so many things. You can be blamed because of things that you have done. You can be blamed because of the wrong choices you've made in life. You can be blamed because you took drugs. You can be blamed because you did bad things that, has la that have landed you to where you are today. But I am telling you, when God sees you in Christ, he sees you unblameable. You are blameless, child of God. You are unblameable. You are holy, unblameable. And he says, above reproach in his sight. Hallelujah. Let me read for you in the using the message Bible, Colossians 1.22. It says, but now by giving himself completely, who gave himself completely? Not you, but Christ. He gave himself completely. It is not about I surrender all. It is not about you surrendering. My friend, your surrendering cannot be enough. It is not about you surrendering all. It's about him. He surrendered all. He gave himself completely at the cross, actually dying for you. That is what the message Bible says, dying for you. Because of that, Christ brought you over to God's side. Hallelujah. Now you are not in the enemy's side. You are in God's side. You are of God. That is why the Bible says you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. So you are on God's side. God is not teaming up with your enemies to fight you. God is not teaming up with diseases to teach you lessons. God is not teaching, uh, teaming up with the devil to make your life a mess. God is not teaming up with your enemy to mess your life or to, to kill you and to destroy everything about you. Why? Because you are no longer on the other side. You are on God's side. And who did this? Listen, he says, by giving himself completely at the cross, actually dying for you, Christ brought you over to God's side. Hallelujah. And put your lives together, whole and holy in his presence. So again, we see him, we see the scriptures telling us something very important there. He says that it is Christ who brought us to God's side. It is Christ who brings men to the presence of God. Mm, think about that. There are many times you've said that we are going to the presence of God. And there are, there are people even, especially, especially some of us who lead uh, uh, the church in praise and worship, we feel like we are taking people to the presence of God. My goodness. There is no human being that has the power to take another human being to the presence of God. No man can take you to the presence of God. Christ himself did it by dying for you. He brought you into God's side. Listen, he says, and brought you over to God's side and put your lives together, whole and holy. So your life with God is, has been put together and you are whole and holy. Where? In his presence. Hallelujah. This is God defining you. He's telling you that you are whole and holy in his presence. And who did this is Christ. Christ in his death burial and resurrection. The Bible says that he was offered for our sins. He died for our sins, but he didn't remain in the place of death. So not only have we been forgiven, he was raised for our, our justification. Not only have we been forgiven, we have been justified. He has gone way be beyond forgiving us. Not only has he paid the debt that we owed. You know, we owed a debt that we could not pay. And not only did he pay a debt he did not owe, but he went overboard and gave us his grace. He gave us abundance. That is why we say that he came that we may have life and have it in abundance. So, you know, when someone pays for you a debt, maybe you are at, uh, you had a debt of 20,000, 100,000 in equity bank or any other bank that you, uh, you work with. 
if someone paid that debt of 500,000 for you, when he pays that debt of 500,000, you remain at point zero. Your account reads zero. Praise be to God because the debt has been cleared. But now he didn't just pay the debt. He went ahead and actually he closed your account. So your account reads zero. Actually, it does not uh, exist again. He closed your account and gave you his very own account. Now the Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ. So now you have his righteousness. You have his joy. You have his peace. Hallelujah. And I'm, exi I'm excited about it. Uh, we'll continue looking at this uh, book of Ephesians and we'll see how God defines us. And I know you'll enjoy this very, very much like I'm enjoying. So I want to stop at that point and I would like to pray for you and I know that God has great things for you. Let us pray. Father, we are so excited about your word that it is you that knew us before the foundations of the earth. It is you that knew us before you, we were formed in our mother's wombs. Yet, you had the greatest definition about us. We choose and we desire to know you that we may walk in this reality of who you have made us to be in Christ Jesus. With I thank you for my uh, my listener and the one viewing me today, viewing this show today. I call them blessed, all my viewers. I call them blessed in their going out and their coming in. I speak healing to anyone that is suffering in any kind of sickness. And I declare the power of your word upon their lives. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. Amen, amen, amen. Until next time, this has been Beholding Christ Show. My name is Ben Fetcher. God bless you because indeed in Christ you are blessed. Thank you very much. <music>